Hello. Hi. Um, <laughs> I have completely forgotten how to do this. You know that thing where they say it's like riding a bike? Nope. Sitting alone in a room, talking to a camera. Decidedly not like, like riding a bike. I'd rather be riding a bike. <laughs> I'd rather be doing just about anything. Cast your mind back, if you will, to uh, the last video. <laughs> the last video I posted, which was just lifetimes ago, um, in which I announced that I was writing another book. Here is a clip from that video. My favourite part of like announcing this recently was I said on Instagram that I thought I was writing something. Like I was like, I'm writing something. I don't know if it's a book. I think it is, you know, watch this space. And someone just replied, cool, see you in three years. <laughs> Perfect. Like, yep, that is about as long as it takes to, to do I this. I am very happy to report that it has only in fact been two years since I posted that. So I'm ahead of schedule. I'm doing well. If ever anyone asks me how long it takes to write a book, two years, two years apparently is my current working turnaround. Um, sorry, I was just, um, just admiring the book, <laughs> which is, just out of shot here on the bed. I will show you that presently. So that's that's the thing. That's the first thing. That's the main thing is wrote a book. Um, I have announced that on Instagram already and I have already posted the title of the book. But in case you didn't see that, you'd be forgiven for not keeping up with me <laughs> waiting by your screens for the past two years for an update. The title of the book is Better By Far. If you've been following me for a long time or you read my first book out of love um you will know a little bit about my background and about um the sort of journey to get here there's something about writing your first book where you kind of you you just spend it all you know you shoot your shot <laughs> you have however many decades worth of feelings and stories to tell and ideas that have been percolating and they they come out but then you're tasked with doing it again when it comes to writing the second one it's it's a really strange thing because it this isn't true but it feels true that you you don't have much more to to pull from you know that you've kind of you've gone down into the pool of, of your ideas and you've dredged up all that you can and you've, you've just packed it all into that first one. I was so afraid that I couldn't do it again. But what I didn't realize was I didn't, I didn't have to do that again. What I did, I did once and it was very special, but the next one is entirely different. You know what it's like? It's like, um, it's like falling in love when you've had that first big love in your life, you know the one. You probably have a name in mind. It is just so all-consuming and, and you're experiencing it all for the first time. And you, you know, you, you feel like you're the first people to fall in love. You feel like you invented love, you know? And it's this very, very special contained thing. And you know, likely it, it, it doesn't last because first loves often don't. When you're sort of recovering from that, one of the big thoughts you have is, how am I gonna love like that again? Like, how, how am I ever going to recreate that with someone new? How am I going to feel those things in the same way? And then you discover, one hopes, you discover that, that you do fall in love again, but it's like apples and oranges. You know, it's not the same thing again. It never, it never will be. And that's what's so beautiful about that first thing is that it's this sort of lightning in a bottle um, experience that you can't, you can't recreate. Making art is very similar to that because in the end it's 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 turned out that this is um it's a whole other thing it's a whole other um child <laughs> you know I feel like I've given birth twice now and people are sort of like well which which is your favorite do you prefer this one to the other and it genuinely feels like comparing kids it's like well no I love them both obviously what I wanted to do was to create something that I could be. Um, as proud of and that I could get as much out of you know by going through the process of writing that I could get as much out of and be changed as much in the process because 
but writing out of love re really changed me. It was quite a symbiotic relationship I had with the art. You know, I contributed to it and it contributed to me. And I wanted to at least feel that again, to feel like, you know, even if it was a different process, that it would, um, it would, it would change me in some way. And this has. Okay, so that's the first thing. The first thing is I wrote a book. I like it and I hope you like it too. The second thing is that I would like to show it to you. It's right here beside me. Now, before I show it to you, I need to show you this video of me receiving the book. In case that wasn't abundantly clear what I did there was I took the book that Dutton worked so hard to make for me and send all the way from New York and I accepted it from the delivery person at the door and I brought it into the living room and I just cut right through the back of the book because I'm an idiot someday I'm sure I will do something gracefully and normally but today is not that day so what I have here is a, a butchered book. <laughs> Thank God the front cover is intact. Thank God. Also, this isn't the book, right? I hate to like, <laughs> hate to ruin the mystery for you, but what this is is a copy of Out of Love with a mock-up of the new cover on it. And now you know that because you've seen the video where I cut through. You can see <laughs> Out of Love through the slice I cut in the back. Um, so look, it's all smoke and mirrors. You know this already, nothing is real. Um, <laughs> so to imagine if you will, imagine if you will, come on this journey with me. Imagine you have purchased a copy of Better By Far and you're holding it in your hands. This is, this is somewhat what that's going to look like. Okay, are you ready? It's me, it's me who's not ready. Okay, I'm not ready, <clears throat> I just need a minute. It's like getting in cold water, you know, you just have to jump in, you just have to jump in. I'm also trying to hold the back of it together as I do this. Okay, so, <clears throat> here is Better By Far. This is what it looks like. Yeah, take a moment, take a moment, let's just, let's just, refocus and oh my god I need you to know how beautiful this is and you may not fully understand you won't until you've read it but when you do this just becomes even more beautiful and it already is I need to talk to you and let's walk through it let's let's talk through this okay let's just indulge me <laughs> indulge me for a moment because I I worked for two fucking years alone in a room writing a book and this is the bit, this is the bit where I get to just gush about it and, and, and be excited. Not, I was going to say not alone. I'm, I'm completely alone, but you're here. It's fine. Okay. So here we go. Better by far is, um, another book, which I would say is set against the backdrop of a breakup. It's not about a breakup, but it begins with one. And in the book, I'm going to put it down for a sec. I'm going to put it down for a sec. Um, in the book, a couple go through a breakup, but they have three months left on their lease. I was going to say, we've all been here. I don't think we have, but a lot of people have been here. So they've gone through a breakup. They're renting a place. They've got three months left on the lease. And they decide that they're going to continue to share the house week on, week off for the next 12 weeks. So she'll be in it one week, he'll be in it the next, so on and so forth. They're not gonna see each other. They're not gonna speak to each other. They're just gonna come and go and stay elsewhere during the weeks they're supposed to. And at the end of that, they're gonna pack the place up and go. It makes sense financially. It makes sense logistically. Does it make sense emotionally? No, 
it's a fucking crazy idea. But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? And we've all been faced with these situations where you just, you just make it work. What is crazy is how things from this book kept manifesting in my life after I had written them. Now, I will say I, I had already been in a situation where I'd broken up with someone and had to stay living in the place with them for a little while. But that was a long time before and circumstances were different. And this time around, I start writing this book and it was originally, it was an apartment they were sharing and then it became a house. And then I wrote in that they broke up on Halloween, on Halloween night, Ihahana in Irish. Then <laughs> I went through a breakup on Halloween. This is like maybe a year into writing it, maybe more, more than a year into writing it. I went through a breakup with someone on Halloween and we decided to share the house week on week off <laughs> for a couple months. It's also about a woman who is trying to write her second book while going through a breakup. And I was trying to write my second book about a breakup while going through a breakup. <laughs> and like, it was already meta. There was already like, there was already a lot of my experience in there that I was using for this character. But it just, it just kept happening to a strange degree. And then my life started informing the book more and more and the book started informing my life more and more and even the title changed I started kind of um genre bending without like I hadn't I hadn't planned for this to happen and again I'm trying to like not spoil too much but yeah like other stuff started to to just creep in without me knowing and um the direction the direction of the narrative started to change my publisher and many friends have suggested that next time I write a book, it, it be about, you know, like a windfall of cash and some just gorgeous, beautiful, perfect, kind stranger entering my life and falling madly in love with me and never treating me badly. Because <laughs> if I am manifesting shit, then that's what I need to start manifesting. Anyway, oh my God, which is all to say that um, I wanted to keep it uh, very clean, very sparse. Uh, there's a lot to do with liminality and liminal spaces, these sort of um, life's little limbos, these sort of um, figurative waiting rooms that you find yourself in, usually between, well, in this case, between um, grief and healing, that sort of, that sort of space that you exist in. Um, and their house sort of becomes this like physical manifestation of that and I just I think they have done such a beautiful job in that and I don't have a copy of Out of Love here with me now I wish I did well I mean I do it's under here <laughs> we can take a peek I guess yeah <laughs> okay um so that's Out of Love this is actually a great that's Out of Love so they've done the same I can't feel it all the way back they've done this is so <laughs> this is so bootleg they've done the same um thing thematically where they have um the two um people in the relationship occupying different halves of the cover and these little silhouettes so it's it's a really gorgeous like sort of sister piece companion piece to out of love and while it is not it's not a sequel a lot of people have asked me that um it's not a sequel but um there are sort of, how do I put this? There are nods to Out of Love in this. It's almost, like I say, it's a sort of sister piece or companion piece without being, um, it, kind of, it doesn't exist in the same fictional universe, but elements of it sort of do. So that is my extremely messy and roundabout way of showing you the cover of Better by Far. Last piece of information, last big piece of information. And then there's a couple little updates I wanna give you after, after this, but the last big thing to know about the book is of course the release date which will be April 23rd 2024. It'll be out in the US and Canada. For UK and Ireland people and everyone else around the world sit tight 
I will have more updates for you soon. You can get it from all good booksellers. Of course, I always encourage you to try and support local businesses. So if you have a local bookstore that you can pick it up from, that would be great. In the meantime, there is a link in the description for you to pre-order now. So if you are just way too excited and can't possibly wait and you want to get your copy ordered, you can click that link and order it. And that would actually be very lovely for me as well. Pre-orders are very, very important. It's like a, it's an indicator of how well the book is selling, how popular it's going to be. It helps me secure deals in other territories, that kind of stuff. And also all of those pre-orders will count towards the first week of sales. So if I have any hope whatsoever on of getting on any kind of list, bestseller list, that kind of stuff, it's a long shot. I know that. But if there's any hope of doing that, then the pre-orders really are massively helpful. It's kind of it's kind of the best way of going about it. So if you're planning on buying the book anyway, I would be very grateful if you could maybe pre-order it in advance. Thank you so much. OK. Is she ready to shut the fuck up? No, she has more things to say, but wait, there's more. I started running writing retreats this year. I've done two so far. They're in person, they're four day long. They were both magical experiences. Like truly, I, I, I just came away feeling so full and so happy and so like fulfilled. So basically the way that came about was we're going back, we're going back again. That breakup that I was telling you about um, last Halloween, I, prior to that happening, um, went to this place um, called Surya Lila. It's a retreat center in Spain that I had been to before. In fact, I when I did the last video announcing I was writing this book, I had just been there for the first time and it's where I started writing better by far. And so a year on, I went back there again uh, because I was really struggling to write. I had a lot of writer's block. I say I had writer's block, turns out what I actually had was a, a lot of anxiety and depression as a result of being in a relationship I shouldn't have been in and I don't really have those anymore anyway, that's that's not for now <laughs> that's a story for another time as a result of the anxiety and depression I couldn't write I was really really struggling and so I went to um, this place Surya Lila to do some writing and while I was there I took part in this um, wellness retreat that a friend of mine, Ellen, was running. And we love Ellen, she's good people, excellent egg. Now, when I tell you I went into that experience at rock bottom, I really mean it. Um, look, it's you and me, we've had these conversations before. It's no secret that I have struggled in the past with depression and um, suicidal ideation, and I felt completely lost, completely directionless, and quite hopeless. My relationship of many years was on the rocks and at the time my mother was extremely ill in hospital. Now she's fine, she's good, but she was in bad shape and I was very very scared and there was a moment where I, I was convinced I was losing both my partner and my mother and I was not in a good way. During one of the um, sessions on this retreat I just had this sudden knowing that I needed to run retreats and that I needed to help other people in the same way that Ellen had helped me. I was just so aware um, of the healing that was happening as a result of writing, of all the healing I've experienced in my life as a result of writing, especially in terms of finding my voice. But I don't mean it in terms of like your voice for publication or your voice for consumption, but like your your voice, your your story, the voice that you had before the bad things happened. You know what I mean? Dodie has a song before the line and she talks about that kind of before and after a traumatic event. And and that's something that comes to mind a lot when I think about this. It's just that we're sort of we we begin as these 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 pure um, innocent, joyful entities, and then, and then life happens, <laughs> and um, it's kind of bleak. But you know what I mean. And 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 you lose you you lose pieces of yourself along the way. And I think I have I have found those on the page, and I've reclaimed those on the page, and it's been a really really empowering experience for me. So I wanted to share that with people, and I wanted to show other people how to do that. I don't know what I was expecting. I was just hoping a few people would come. I was hoping maybe five or 10 people would come. And then 28 people <laughs> came to this retreat. 
and oh my god it was glorious each and every single one of them came in talking about how nervous they were to be there how scared they were we addressed that head-on on the first day um with a little exercise around fear and then the whole four days just kind of they just flowed so beautifully i just can't believe how by the last day everything and everyone had changed so much everyone was it's like they're lifelong friends we're all on a whatsapp group together now by the way and we talk constant i can't keep up <laughs> Every time I open my phone, there's 50 new messages. And a bunch of a bunch of the people who came to the retreat actually just met up in London recently. And I think there's a few of us gonna meet up when I'm out in LA. There's this whole new community for them and a place for them to share work uh, that, that they're writing and working on. And it, yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm so blown away by it, as you can tell. My next retreat will be happening in January. So January, 2024, uh, from the 2nd to the 6th of January in Surya Leela. If you're interested in that, you can drop an email to, get it right Hazel, info at writetoyourself.co.uk. I will put that email address in the description as well. Um, but yeah, you can email that address for a full brochure and all the prices. I think that's actually everything. <laughs> How long is this video? So long. I mean, it's been two years, right? Like we had, I had some stuff to fill you in on. And also just to say, if you know, I'm, you can probably tell, but um, I was talking a little bit about um, a time last year when I was, I was really in a bad way and um, I'm doing really well. <laughs> in case you're like, oh God, Hazel doesn't seem good. I'm good. Um, I'm, oof, dare I say the, best I've been <laughs> in like a long time and you know I don't want to jinx it or anything but um I'm good I my depression has pretty much fucked off this year has been everything I needed it to be I feel so held and supported and loved I've poured so much of 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 this of my experiences into this book and I'm just so glad it's Done. I'm so glad it's out of me and on the page and you get to hold it in your hand soon and love it as much as I do. Here it is again. Oh my god, she's beautiful. Okay, signing off, shutting up. You're fucking wonderful. I love you. I love that you still show up here and listen to this. <laughs> honestly do. I'm so um, glad that it's kind of blossomed and evolved into this this bigger thing now that I'm not only writing books but I'm also helping other people to write. It's it just all feels very uh, meaningful and serendipitous and lovely and gorgeous and great. Okay I'm shutting up all right. Uh, bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.